Absolutely. Make sure things keep on going well. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. No? Hello, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. We are here uh, live uh, at Vision Dorel. My name is Violeta Baba. I'm part of the selection committee, and I'm very glad to have uh, here with us the directors of Bellum, uh, filming our international competition. Welcome, David Herdes and George Gottmark. We are very, very happy to have you here again, since we had you uh, in Neon in the past days, presenting the film in a theater. And now it's uh, great to have this double festival, uh, having the film also online and having this discussion uh, broadcast. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my first question, it's uh, about your characters. In your film, we mainly follow three characters. So how did you find these uh, three very particular characters that can um, put together, uh, organize uh, with the big effort and work of your editing and the sense and the dramatic arc in the film? Uh, so the first character, Frederick, the Swedish uh, engineer uh, or scientist, Actually, George started filming with him uh, a year, I think, before we, we started working on this film on another project, uh, which was about, uh, you should maybe say this, but about weapon export and like Swedish neutrality politics. And then the second character, uh, Bill, uh, who lives in, in this small community in the Nevada desert called Indian Spring, he was uh, some, it took quite a while before we found him actually. We, we found this place, Indian Springs, which is just opposite the road from Creech Air Force Base, which is one of the biggest Air Force bases for, uh, for uh, drone operations, among other things. Uh, and in this place, Indian Springs, which is like, it's half an hour north of Las Vegas in the middle of the desert, there was this small bar called the Oasis. And uh, so we found this bar actually online, looking at Google Map and Facebook, etc. And we decided to go there. And uh, the first time we were there, we didn't find him, but we, we felt that this was a really interesting place because it's like you found people from the Second World War, from the Vietnam War, and then also, of course, the ones who are fighting wars today. Uh, so it's like almost like a microcosmos of American war history in this little bar. Uh, so the second time we went there, we met Bill and he had this special appearance around him, I think. And we immediately felt that this was our character, basically. And he, he had just come back from uh, being deployed in Afghanistan. Um, so, I mean, he was in the middle of trying to get back to a normal life in, in this little community. Uh, and then Paula, we, we met, we, we found her images online, actually, and then we got in contact with her, and then she was coming to Sweden, and then we met with her here, and then we started working together with her. And that was quite, we worked with Bill and Frederick for almost six, five years, six years before we met Paula. Mm. And, and for you, it was important that the third character was a female character, or that was a random and, and could have been any photographer, or bring in another perspective no matter the gender i think i mean we started to feel that it's a very masculine film with which we <laughs> with a lot of men everywhere so it was kind of nice with a female presence but also it's it's kind of goes with the territory since we're filming people who are uh, involved with war making weapons soldiers it's it's a masculine world as well but but i think it added some some good balance to the film to have a female yeah yeah absolutely and uh also because of the reflection on the images uh, that uh, Paula brings with her profession. And uh, in terms of the structure of the film, uh, there's a challenging editing, as we were saying, we come and go, but then um, how uh, did you uh, get to this uh, structure to, to find three characters that never interact, but nevertheless, we make the connections. Can you uh, talk about that, please? 
Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I'll start a little bit. Then uh, we had uh, we mentioned in the Q and A in the theater that we had um, Barbell as uh, an inspiration in Yaitu's film. Uh, the Chusons had three characters uh, in different parts of the world, but they are of course connected in a in a more closely knit way. But our original idea was to connect people through the use of drone warfare, because actually Frederick makes technology for war and something that's not so evident and maybe not so important in the end. But but uh, Bill is working uh, with, the, with the drone program. Uh, so, so we felt that the drones was going to connect them somehow, uh, the technology, because it's also this thing that you're somebody put, pushing a button in one part of the world, you can actually kill somebody on the other side of the, the planet. So that, that was the first uh, entry into that idea of making three stories that are connected, but not, uh, but they never meet each other. And we, I mean, we were discussing also just doing a film in Indian Springs in this community, basically only spending time in this bar. And, you know, but then we also were discussing the fact that these stories were disconnected and the, the friction between those stories creates almost like its own narrative. Uh, so, so that's also how we wanted to construct the, the film, that a lot is happening in this friction between those different stories. And that's also how we, in the end, came up with the idea of creating this uh, uh, narration as well. And so we have been collaborating with a um, Swedish poet and author, Johannes Anjuro, who has been uh, writing together with an American writer as well, Mercy's May. Uh, and the idea with that is not to kind of uh, put those stories together, but to use those stories as a starting ground uh, to kind of start you know, reflecting upon bigger questions, basically. But it yeah. was a long, it was a long journey. We edited for one and a half year. I mean, of course, with breaks in in between, and we had, we, uh, I mean, we had two main editors, uh, and then we were editing a lot ourselves. But it's been a, I mean, it's been a complex and long process. Definitely. I I can imagine because uh, the, the 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 editing in the film is uh, has to be very precise to work uh, for what you imagine, and it really does. Um, now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the characters, since uh, we, uh, of course, get to know them through their profession or what they are doing or what they did in, in the case of Bill. But also there's a lot of their human side, their more their fragilities or, or their, their um, life at home. Was it important for you to, to give a, a complete uh, vision on these characters or, or why this decision of getting to know them more in a more intimate way? Yeah, I, <laughs> okay, I'll just be short. I think it's in a way, it, I, for, I mean, I think it's almost for me a, a matter of getting to know the people that you are doing documentaries about. It's really important. And otherwise they just become a mirror of what you really have the idea to do from the beginning. But I think it also reflects the, our own process that we kind of were a bit black and white in the beginning when we got started working with these characters. Like how do we connect to an American soldier living on the other side of the, uh, I mean, living in the US and fighting wars in Afghanistan. Uh, so it was a little bit in the beginning, I think we were judgmental, but then once we got to know them, we also, of course, started understanding the complexity of their realities. Uh, so, I mean, it, it was a, a, like a no brainer, to be honest, that we needed to go deeper and get to know these people uh, and also try to be just to them. And because it's it's a story also about, I mean, the characters, but about the structures in which they are uh, part. George, do you want something, to add something? George? <laughs> no, I don't have to add anything at that point. <laughs> I think no, I, I agree with David. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the narration. And, and, and how was the decision to, to have this narration? It was in terms of uh, putting things together, organization, or also adding another level? Yeah, I think like if we, in a way we are, if we go back to the characters, because I guess it's connected with somehow we were trying to look at structures uh, in a way like, or places, you know, what's the, how do people talk in Sweden and how do people talk in this little bar in Nevada and what is it like to be a war photographer? Uh, so in a way they, well, I mean, there is a film about three people, but it's also about three different ways of speaking. And we felt that it may be like we were talking about it. Maybe we were also almost making like a sociological film about uh, 
larger things, larger structures. And then we thought it would be a nice way to zoom out and maybe look a bit at ourselves. And, and you know, uh, so that was the, the main point uh, of having a, a voiceover. Yeah, and, and in order to, to maybe go more to the main subject or one of the main subject that is there, that is the, the, the forms of the war, especially now with the different technologies, the artificial, the drones, or the the, the, the world that starts to be more and more an, an abstract thing. And how important was it for you to start with the Robert Oppenheimer um, quote, uh, but also the, the images and the footage? George? <laughs> um, I think it... Uh... I, that's also part of that. So we had, I mean, we, we talk a lot, me and David. Uh, that's the process, and we, we read a lot, and we go into these subjects. So it, it, we wanted to make it about something bigger, I guess, than just. Uh, and in a way, that what Frederick is doing, or not him solely, like Oppenheimer was solely responsible for, for that program that they developed, the atomic bomb. But at least this, the possibility of having AI that could uh, kill people. Uh, he's. In, it's a very big question also, for, for, and we thought that it, it's, it's quite interesting to put it in a historical context, uh, and that's why we used Oppenheimer, because it's also a very emotional uh, moment to me that he's like, he feels he has uh, actually created Frankenstein's monster, and he's maybe, you can see almost a tear in his eye that he's, he's responsible for those hundreds of thousand people's lives in, in, in Nagasaki and, and Hiroshima. Um, so, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, we felt it was a nice way of framing the film. Yes. And I think also the fact that we are working with this kind of cutting edge technology and I mean, it, it in a way, it, we, as we said, we started with the drones, but then after a while, we also started realizing that it doesn't really matter what the tool in itself is. The, the question is what we as human beings do. And if we develop something, will we ever come to a point where we will say, no, enough is enough? I mean, in terms of AI, uh, the algorithms they are creating kind of random errors in order to see if there is a possibility of creating new algorithms by themselves that could create new behaviors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then, of course, very similar to op what Oppenheimer realized, do we come to a point as humans be human beings where we think like maybe we shouldn't go further? And I think that is a question that we were getting back to as well during the process a lot. Yes, and actually the, that question is also addressed when there's this um, thought about God and where yeah. we position ourselves. If I mean, if if we believe in God and if we understand the idea of God, mm -hmm. where are we? And and now that we are talking about elevated uh, subjects, um, I would like also to to know about uh, your ideas uh, of uh, art as is presented in a film as a dilemma, um, working, uh, Paula working with photographs uh, uh, about tragic uh, situations, events, and, and portraying um, kids in a difficult uh, situation in the context of war, and then asking herself uh, how to make this beauty what about uh, you in that situation? I mean, you are talking about also war, that is, uh, uh, as you uh, put it in the title, Damon, and, and then um, how to make a beautiful film. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, close to what we're doing. We're, in the, we're making a film about war and we're portraying an image about it. So it's something we have. And, and any film, I think, we, even before, like we have done work that I guess are more not at least similar to what Paula's doing in the, in the fact that we're going to poor places and filming people who are suffering something and then you're trying to make a piece of art of that so it's something that you, you we have been struggling with and discussed a lot me and David uh, so this was actually an attempt to do something a bit different to so not look at classical documentary victims that we should feel sorry for and empathize but rather like the yeah, people uh, who are maybe in some kind of positions of power. That was the idea, anyway, from the beginning. Um, I don't know if this is answering your question, <laughs> but uh, no. But I, I mean, I, I mean, I think it was it was a discussion that we tried to have with Paula a lot as well, because I, of of course, by sh creating a piece that somehow reflects on the reality that we want to show or our 
uh, how do you say, our um, seen through our glasses, so to say, our perspective. Then, of course, there's a big, huge responsibility that comes along with that. And and uh, I mean, one of the questions that we are raising in this film is like, how are those narr narratives of war created? And what role does the images of Paula, for example, create in our perception of the world? If we see these images of poor kids or, uh, you know, victims in Afghanistan, and then you see men with long beard, and th those are the images that we get in the newspapers, it also helps create our, uh, like, the perception of how the world is divided. These are the good people and these are the bad people, etc. Uh, but with this film, we are also part of creating that narrative. So I think for me and for us, we have been discussing it a lot. It's we don't we can't really give any answers to this, but we want to raise the question with this film. Yeah, I see. And uh, how do you see the scene when uh, Paula asked the kid to to give a smile? <laughs> Well, that, that's something that uh, we both found uh, quite uh, problematic. I mean, it's 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 a uh, yeah, it, it's um, to be like just my my physical uh, my own personal reaction to it. it it's not uh, something that it looks a little bit exploitative, and and I, you know, I'm not judging Paula and all that. She's done a lot of fine work, and she's a very brave photographer who's done uh, a lot of things that I've never even been close to. But but at that point, I feel that it's that it's almost like a um, you're taking advantage, yeah taking advantage of that and and then when, but then again like uh, going back to ourselves I've, I've also been in situations in in other films you film something and then when the person in front of you in front of the camera is in a hard moment in life then you at the same time realize okay this can be a powerful moment in our film so that's a, a big dilemma as a filmmaker and it sometimes you feel quite shitty going back home i think after those days it's it's not easy to solve uh, mm. so but it is an in, i think it is an interesting moment uh, because it's something that really provokes people i mean after the screening on uh, monday we we were discussing this specific moment a lot and I think one of the reasons is because it's very close to, it's kind of mirroring what we as documentary filmmakers are often doing. Yeah. And that is problematic and we need to discuss it, I think. Yeah, and actually some people were like, I think they looked at the film and they thought, okay, we have the guy who makes the weapon, we have the soldier, and then, okay, great, we have this war photographer, she's going to be the good person. And then they get very provoked and we, we don't show her as a good person because that's we're actually looking at ourselves and I don't feel that I'm uh, without any blame in on any of these situations so rather than just looking, okay, it's Paula, it's, it's actually the one constructing the image. It's, it's hard to free yourself from from the, the ethical uh, equation. Uh, no, it's good you mentioned this because yeah, um, we didn't discuss it. And actually, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, very interesting because um, you presented there and it's uh, provoking and it's uh, also um, somehow very revealing. I mean, like how this works, the, the, all the, the market of the images, the market of the world. Sure. Yeah. Um, and war so, is selling I mean there's a lot of money in war that's I mean both whether you take pictures or you're creating uh, AI or working as a soldier it's a lot of money and I mean I know with the, with the I'm not 100% sure about the numbers but I think when we started filming with Frederick it was like 80% of the economy that was put into the development of AI was coming through like the defense industry Mm. And uh, how how did you work with the the music and the sound design? Because we kind of go through with with a uh, feels very organic, but I'm sure there's a lot of work behind. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, we are, we actually have a sister company uh, in in our company, Momento Film, who is uh, doing sound. So our sound designer is sitting next to us when we were editing. Uh, so he was involved at a very close, early stage and he was also collaborating directly together with Krista Linder, the composer. So I think a lot of things happened with Krista Linder and Ted Krotkiewski, the sound designer, to parallel with the editing. 
So they were kind of bouncing ideas to us while we were editing. And that shifted also, okay, here we can maybe stay longer because the, the soundscape and the music adds to the editing. So we can, we can you know, let the sound play a more important role in the editing than if we wouldn't have worked with them at the early stage. So it's been a really organic process with them. And, and sometimes Ted, the, the sound designer, he was find, finding a uh, sound from the music that actually rhymed together with the sound of the drone. And then he started combining them. And at the same time, Krista was doing the same thing. He found some stuff in the, in the sound that he could actually use as a starting point for the music. So it, it was a very nice, beautiful process. Yeah, it 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 really uh, pays off. Uh, it's, uh, it works very very well. And, uh, and George, uh, how how do you work together? I mean, do you discuss each decision? Do you split the work? How is this a uh, co-direction? Um, it's it's pretty organic, I would say. I mean, we discuss a lot. Like I thought, that's the, the main thing that we both enjoy. I think talking about the ideas and how do we put what which which characters and why and how we're going to portray it and what do we want to do. Uh, so that's like the the behind the thing. That's very enjoyable, I think, to do with somebody else. I, I don't know by yourself. It's a very different thing. So so we bounce ideas off one another and we can be quite blunt. So sometimes you're like, oh, I love that idea. And then we go with it. And sometimes like now and then we stop each other. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's, a, it's a collaboration in that way. And then on set, it's uh, it's also I mean, we have a different strengths and, you know, sometimes you connect more with the person. Sometimes you have a better day and, you know, sometimes you are more in front and in back. So it, 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 we don't I think it's um, organic in that way. You know, uh, we can somebody we haven't even been both of us to all you know every shoot because there's been a lot of shoots we've been filmed a lot of times but but basically we are always keeping each other in the loop and, and uh, yeah do <laughs> so. you agree david yes and, and i think one thing that we discussed a lot was because we did the previous film together called citizen of catch uh, where we re we, we kind of looking back at that process we realized that we compromised a lot Like if, if George had a crazy idea and I had another crazy idea, we, we didn't really uh, try to actually go so deep into them. But we kind of cut all the edges and, and the film, I think, suffered from that a bit. But with this one, we agreed from an early stage that let's not compromise. We should actually go develop all the ideas and see where they lead us. And maybe we find something else than exactly, specifically that idea. So I think that was, don't you think so, George? That we we discussed it quite a lot. That let's not compromise. Let's go all the way. That's maybe why it took eight years to make the film. But <laughs> wow! And and you finished the film during COVID times. And how was that affecting your timing or your work? Yeah, uh, we had we had the last editing. Uh, we had Ida. Then you, there are two editors in the film. Uh, there are more editors, but those are really the main. They, they put a lot of work and helped us a lot, both of them. But we, in the end, we couldn't continue in Denmark, so that was one of the reasons we shifted to Sweden. Uh, but I think, in a way, the film quite kind of gained from that because Ida put a lot of the thought and, and structure in the beginning, but and Christo, uh, Christa came in with another completely under, uh, different. Um, Christopher, yeah. Christopher, sorry, <laughs> with a different, um, yeah, different skills. So, so in the, in the end, it kind of served us. Yeah, I think it worked really well. Yeah. But it, I mean, it made the film a lot. I mean, it was complicated. It prolonged the process. We were yeah, expecting to finish in uh, March, April last year, one year ago, and uh, it was just finished now. So. Yeah, the co-production with Denmark was the main thing. We had to do the sound design a lot later, also. So we, yeah, it was, uh, it was a. Uh, slow slow ending to the film because of covid mm. and uh, we had uh, this question uh, in, during the screening and then um, probably it's a question that others from the online audience will have um, bill did return to afghanistan yes he did he he, he returned once as i as what what we know at least But then he got back, and then they, I mean, they were living together in, in Las Vegas. So, okay. So that's not why he passed away. No. Mm. Okay, that's not the reason. No. And then are you elaborating new projects? Yeah, we started discussing on the plane today, actually. So let's see. <laughs> ah, brand new. <laughs> this yeah, is fresh but, news. Yeah, but this time is going to be about happiness or something. 
<laughs> okay. And, and, and I have one more question. Why do you work together? Why do you co-direct? I think it's because it's uh, like I said, it's more much more uh, fun and enjoyable rather than being in. Uh, we're both quite. Uh, we like to talk about ideas. I think that's like something we have in common and uh, and with each other also. So that uh, makes it a lot more fun. <laughs> Basically, yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, well, thank you very very much. It's a. Uh, so good to hear you again and uh, we will be looking forward to your next project so uh, please keep us updated and thank you very much best of luck thank you very much and thanks to the festival for inviting us as well it's been a really nice pleasure our yeah, pleasure okay bye bye, bye, -bye.